Hey everyone, I'm Brian Parks, and in this video, I want to show how to debug PHP uh, in Visual Studio Code with PHP running in Windows Subsystem for Linux. Uh, this is actually a, a video that was requested uh, in a comment on one of my earlier videos on uh, writing PHP and running it using Windows Subsystem for Linux. Uh, it was asked, you know, can, can we do debugging with that? The answer is yes. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, and for this video, I'll actually be using the same code that I wrote for my last PHP, PHP video, which was on uh, connecting to a MySQL database using PHP. Uh, so if you haven't seen either of those videos, I'll leave links to those in the description below. Go check them out if that's something you're interested in. If not, uh, let's get right into the demo. So here I have a uh, Windows terminal and I'm logged into my Windows subsystem for Linux uh, instance. First thing we need to do is uh, install something called xdebug. Uh, so I already have it installed, but real quick I'll show you how I did it. sudo apt install xdebug. And in my case I'm using the Ubuntu um, Windows subsystem for Linux environment. Uh, if you're using uh, something else the command might be slightly different. Uh, but I'll show you how to do it for Ubuntu and the, the, everything should kind of kind of translate. So sorry not xdebug php-xdebug and you run that command and it'll install the PHP module. So xdebug is, is actually a PHP module uh, that's not installed by default when you just install PHP. The next thing you need to do is enable some settings and in Ubuntu, all Ubuntu's, but specifically for our purposes Windows Subsystem for Linux, uh, this lives in Etsy um, PHP 7.2 and then there are different uh, areas where you can do some configuration. So under Apache 2 is uh, if you are running Apache uh, PHP as an Apache module, that's the configuration it would use. If you're running from the command line, the the CLI folder is the configuration that it would use. We're interested in CLI because th that's how we're going to run PHP. So let's look into that directory. So there's a PHP.ini, which in all PHPs, PHP.ini is the the, the root configuration file. Uh, and we could look into that, but in Ubuntu, and it, this is actually a, a convention carried over from Debian and uh, possibly other Linux dis distributions as well, there's this conf.d folder. And that's where kind of the individual configurations for individual modules lives. So let's check that out. And here at the very end, you'll see a file called 20-xdebug.ini. So let's open that up. And I'm actually going to open that up in uh, VI. That's my editor of choice. Uh, if you prefer Nano, you can do that. Uh, if you want Emacs, you can do that. I don't think I have Emacs installed here, though. Uh, and um, I'm most comfortable with VI, so let's do that. So here, and you, you will have to use sudo there. Uh, you'll notice in the bottom it says it opened it read only. That's because I'm, I'm not root and I just opened this up so any edits that I make uh, I wouldn't be able to save them. But if you did sudo vi and then that, that file path you'll be in good shape. So by default this first line is what's in this folder or in this, this configuration file here. I added these lines here. So xdebug uh, it is an .ini file so it follows .ini uh, conventions. So this creates the xdebug or starts the xdebug section and then xdebug.remote enable equals one, xdebug.remote auto start equals one. This allows us to connect over an HTTP port or a, you know, a TCP port. Uh, so because we're on Windows Subsystem for Linux and we'll actually be um, kind of running in a separate process, uh, it's easiest just to use that port to, to, to access that xdebug information. Basically this makes xdebug 
uh, send its information to a specific port and we expect something, uh, some service to be listening on that port. In our cases, it's going to be VS Code. Okay, so close that. Now, you'll see I'm in working slash YT demo. So let's just go ahead and start the PHP development server on port 8000, I think will be good. Okay. Now that's that started up. Now let's go over into Visual Studio Code. And I've actually already opened up uh, Visual Studio Code um, via this. I just typed code dot uh, over in. Uh, so let's, let's actually do that. So code dot. And it opens up my, my Visual Studio Code instance. So let's, let's start that development server up again, go back over to Visual Studio Code. Okay, so now this is the same code that I used in the, uh, the last video on PHP. So if you go down to the, um, let's see, first things first. So if you go to extensions, you'll see a bunch of different stuff. You'll actually see two sections here. Local, which is where I'm running the Visual Studio Code UI, and WSL Ubuntu, which is where the Visual, the, the VS Code server, as it's called, uh, is running. So the things that I installed here, I actually did install PHP IntelliSense uh, to get some, some extra code complete. Uh, and I installed this PHP debug uh, extension. And this is what we're going to use to connect to Xdebug. And if you click on that, you'll actually get a lot of good information. And actually, this is this is kind of the instructions that I used to 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 do all this and to uh, prep for this video. Uh, these instructions are very good. So if you get lost or have any questions, go look at these instructions. They're great. I can't say enough good things about them. Uh, some of the things aren't necessary, like uh, adding Zend extension equals path to xdebug to your php.ini. That's already taken care of for you uh, when you when you install it in Windows Subsystem for Linux. But you can do PHP info to uh, to make sure everything's set up correctly. So you'll see I actually have a little info.php file, and all it does is do PHP info. So let's open up a new window and go to localhost 8000 slash info.php. We'll get the output of PHP info. So if we scroll all the way to the bottom, I think, pretty close to the bottom. Here we go. We get xdebug information. So we can see the modules enabled and we can also see, if we go down to Remote Enable, we see it's on, and Remote Auto Start is also on, because that's what we set in that, that INI file. So now, let's go back to Visual Studio Code, go back to index.php, and you can see I've set a breakpoint here. So let's, let's do some debugging. So if you go over to the debug tab here, you get some options. Let's click to create a launch.json file. This will automatically give us everything we need. So click PHP for the environment. We get a launch.json file. That looks good. And now, I'm not sure why that didn't refresh. But at this point, we should be able to, what we'll do is listen for xdebug. And that's, there's something weird going on here. Let me just close and reopen Visual Studio Code. There we go. 
So now we have an option, listen for xDebug. We also have the other option here, but we only care about listen for xDebug. Let's click play, and it's started up. It's listening for xDebug information uh, on port 9000, which is the default port. Uh, since everything is actually running on localhost, we didn't have to change any additional configuration, even though there's the WSL side and the Windows side. Uh, there's some magic that goes on, so both sides are localhost and they can talk to each other on ports. So now let's go back to our browser and go to the index page. And now you can see it's stopped on my breakpoint. And I can actually inspect. Obviously, that's uninitialized, but if I step over, now I can see that query has some information. I have uh, watches locals, my whole call stack, uh, and then as we go through, you can see, you know, now result has something in it, two rows, three fields, and we can go through the, the loop, right, and now we can see that result, uh, well, result is still the same, uh, but we can see as things get printed out, and we can see that now row is the second uh, item in the result set. And we can keep stepping over, we can just continue. Now, of course, in our, our browser, the page has finished loading and it's, 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 it's shown everything it's going to. But we were able to step through in Visual Studio Code, even though PHP is running in Windows Subsystem for Linux. And now, one of the things that I think is really cool about this is that I don't think I've ever actually used xDebug. Um, and I don't know if that's because everything that I was using to, to write PHP uh, just didn't really lend itself to that. I used VI a lot. I used, uh, let's see, I used Atom. I used um, Sublime Text for a while. Um, I might have used TextMate for, for a brief period. Uh, obviously now I'm 100% on Visual Studio Code. I think Visual Studio Code blows the other two out of the water. Uh, I really loved them, I thought they were great, but Visual Studio Code just is, is light years beyond those two at this point. Um, and maybe in, thanks in part to the, the groundwork that those two editors uh, provided. But its integration with xDebug is fantastic. I've never been able to set breakpoints and step through my PHP code before, um, and this this is this is a game changer for me. Uh, so if you are working with PHP and are frustrated that you you know you have to write echo all over the place or uh, error log all over the place in order to do your debugging, do this. Switch to this. Switch 100% to this. Use Visual Studio Code. Use anything that can run xDebug. I think on Windows, running PHP and Windows Subsystem for Linux is by far the easiest way to do it. Um, and it's super simple to set up xDebug in your Windows Subsystem for Linux environment. So Visual Studio Code with xDebug, PHP running in Windows Subsystem for Linux, and then set breakpoints wherever you want. Run your code, uh, you know, Visual Studio Code is listening for xDebug uh, information. This is just it just fantastic. I, I you know, I, I'm going to pull up some of my old PHP code, open it up in Visual Studio Code, uh, run it the way I just showed, and start stepping through it and seeing, you know, if, if I can easily find some of the bugs that I, I know are plaguing some of that code. Um, this, really, I, I think this, this is a game changer, uh, for me, anyway. Uh, just to be able to step through my PHP code, um, I, I think, you know, I, I'm trying to think back to the years that I spent writing PHP code and wondering how much faster I could have written that PHP code, uh, not just with what I know now, but with the tools I have available to me now, or even if I used Visual Studio Code back then and this extension still existed, uh, if I just used that extension and set up xDebug the way I have it set up here, how much faster I would have been able to develop that PHP code. So I really think this is a great way to go. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. And if you try this out, um, again, I can't recommend this enough. Go ahead, try this out. Uh, 
Let me know what your experiences are like in the comments below. And of course, please share this video with your friends, colleagues, uh, anyone you know who might be looking to get into PHP or struggling with PHP or frustrated because they don't have a good debugging environment for PHP. This is the debugging environment for PHP, so it's great. Um, and be sure to subscribe to the channel. I put out content like this. Uh, I try to do it weekly, um, and I've actually got two tracks on the channel right now. There's the more technical track with stuff like this, and there's a less technical track with uh, more general, like how to be a software engineer, how to think like a software engineer, various problems we run into. Uh, I, I try to have fun with that as well. I've actually got one coming up where my cat will make an appearance, so stay tuned for that and subscribe and uh, click that button for notifications to know when that gets gets released. Uh, and of course, hit that thumbs up button if you found this helpful. Thanks for watching and have a great day.